to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where I also hate um, road construction and stuff out my window. They seem to be not making a lot of noise now, but they're also going to have to drive a truck up and dump a bunch of blacktop out in the hole they made. But basically, I had a ton of stuff I wanted to get done today, and that just made my brain go crazy. There were jackhammers, they were bulldozing, they were... Um, backhoeing, dropping tons of concrete in the back of the truck, and it's right outside my window. You can still hear them. I figured if I didn't record today, I didn't know if I was going to be able to get to tomorrow. What would be really fucking cool is if you could go over to iTunes and give this podcast five stars. And if you're listening to this on the YouTubes, you should like and share and subscribe. All of these things are things you should do. One of the things I've been doing the last 24 hours, because I've been kind of losing my mind is um, playing my guitar, um, trying to drown out the noise from outside. Today, on my YouTube of the day of this recording, I uh, posted me doing a cover of Can't Hardly Stand It, the Cramps slash Charlie Feathers tune. Probably tomorrow, I'll put out the In the Pines or Where Did You Sleep Last Night, like lead belly nirvana whatever one you want to take i did that and then today i did um 13 while i was wanting to kill myself with that shit outside and 13 is a song that glenn danzig wrote and then johnny cash played first on um the first american recordings album he did with rick rubin and then um danzig ended up covering his own song um a little later on a different danzig album and then um, since then, I was learning how to play um, Under My Car, the Mazzy Star song. It's like probably my favorite Mazzy Star song. I don't know, Fade Into You is always going to be the best, but um, I really fucking like that song. And I was doing that, and I was like, should I record this? I'm like, I don't know. And then for some reason, that song, that old-ass song by The Rays, Silhouettes, popped into my head. And so I learned how to play that. The funny thing about old songs is that the chord structures are so... Like, they're the same. But they use all these different chord variations. So you end up learning a lot of chords that either you knew at one point and forgot, or you just don't remember. I was doing that. Um, and then I was doing um, Etta James at Last, which I fucking love that song. But that song doesn't really have a whole lot going on. And if you don't have like an orchestra playing with you, it sounds kind of boring. So I was like, oh, okay. And then the silhouette song sounded weird singing it by myself. Like that seems like you need like, especially for the silhouette, 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 ah, you know, that whole thing. And then um, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I, I remember I used to play, I only had, I, I only have eyes for you by the flamingos all the time, like on my bass. And I'm like, why did I never, like, record this song? This is, like, one of my favorite songs ever. And then I started playing it. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is why. This song is boring as fuck to play. And then the way the chords are set up, I want to do the bass line, walk on it. And it's kind of tricky to do it and make it sound good. You could do an open D on it, but that just sounds kind of weird. And then you can do, like, a high G on it, and that sounds even weirder. I don't know. I'm just like, I don't know if I even want to do the song, but it's such a fucking good song. But I think it's just the atmosphere of that song makes it. So, and then they finally fucking stopped. Now they're watering the dirt. In case you don't know, they pulled up, like, a few weeks ago, I showed video of this, and they just cut out this little part of the concrete. I'm like, they did all this work just for that? And then they came back and they're like, no, hold my beer. I'm going to take out the whole corner of the street and, um, like, fuck you with it. And there's, like, 15 fucking dudes in orange vests and hard hats that's job, apparently, is to just stand or lean, you know? Um, I'm not going to talk shit on anybody. I mean, motherfuckers are getting up at, like, 5 a.m., right? Get up that early. You deserve to fucking do something as fucking boring and stupid as standing it's like you're basically a fucking human traffic cone. Like, there's traffic cones out there, but they're taller. And their vests are brighter than the cones. So, whatever. Well, that.
that was an abrupt cut. They started up again. They had to fill a hole. Their lunch was over, and they decided that now, or at that moment, was the time to start pissing me off again. And, you know, I'm not trying to be a dick. I just, there are certain noises that trigger my madness, and not in a good way. Like, in a, like, everyone needs to get the fuck away from me because I'm about to fucking lose my shit kind of way. And so, that went on until, like, 5.30 last night. So I'm just like, okay, fuck it. And then they weren't finished. And so today they were doing other stuff, but they were a lot quieter today. So I appreciated that a lot more. And I thought they finished up and they just have the cones there because the shit's drying. But I'm looking and there's like a maybe six foot by two foot strip that still doesn't have anything in it. So they will be back tomorrow, apparently, to fix that hole. I think this is the first time I ever did a podcast where I started it one day and then um, came back to it the next day. But I went back and listened to it, and that was some good conversation about some awesome music. So that's always good. Hell, we even talked about the Rays. I could talk fucking doo-wop all fucking day, dude. That's some fucking blast from the past. Not even my past, like someone else's past. Silhouette, 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 silhouettes. All right, so, you know, we're here, and we haven't even done the shout-outs yet. So let's get on that shit. Oh, and we do have some new folks, so let me make sure to do that. I want to give a big thank you to Chase, to Michael, to Cedar, to Harry, and a big thank you for Deborah doing the right thing and pushing her pledge up a notch. So thank you for that. That's fucking awesome. I think, I'm not 100%, but I think that puts you at the postcard tier. So for those of you who don't know, I don't have any right here, actually. We got a couple people in the postcard tier now. And what that is, is that every month you get a postcard with a piece of art on the front of it. And on the back of it, with your address, is a poem of mine. A little poem stuck right there on the thingy. So that's cool. And then over to the thank you crew, I want to give a big thank you to... To Patrick, to Britt, to JH, and to our newest member of the Thank You Crew, um, I think it's Jan. So let me know if I'm pronouncing your name right, first off. Oh, and Jess, thank you for sticking around. I appreciate that. Th that's awesome. I'm glad you decided to stick around. Thank you, thank you. All right. And then, over to the badass Mama Jamas over at the Anarchy Crew. I want to give a big thank you to, to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Hannah, to Thomas, to Tim, to Lisa, to Josh, to Alan, to Shaylin, to Caitlin, to Andrew. Thank you guys. You guys are awesome. And I also want to give a big thank you to the biggest Mamma Jamma of Mamma Jamma Town, the number one chappie, the SDG. Thank you so much. And if you would like to join all of these lovely people and get over there and do the right thing all you have to do is either go to patreon.com slash matt wall or go to youtube.com slash at matt wall and um then just look at the different tiers and things that are offered and you get to pick what you want to do so thank you so much i appreciate all of you just had to go get a cup of joe now, I know some of you have been telling me to lay off the coffee, and I appreciate your concern. I really, really do. It means a lot. Oh, my God. Stop it. Stop it. So today's going to be really a loose talk because uh, this is a topic that I wanted to touch on a little bit um, two episodes ago and um, never came back to it. And so we're going to be doing that now. But I just wanted you to know, too, that the episode after this one um, is going to be another uh, question episode. So I will be going over topics and questions that you guys all send in to me. So you could either send me an email to IHateMattWall at gmail.com. Or you could leave comments on videos on my YouTube page. And I will get to the questions 
that way as well. So hopefully we will have a lot to talk about next time, which I guess will be Saturday. Oh, and then also for those of you who listen to the podcasts on YouTube, but you are not in any of my membership tiers, you will notice that the episodes that are coming out seem kind of old. Like I posted one the other day from Christmas, okay? Now that is because I'm trying to catch up all the episodes to make them kind of around the same time. So I think how this is going to go is that members on YouTube will get the podcast a few days early and then it'll go up on iTunes and then it'll go up on YouTube for everybody else. So that's how that's going to go. And um, I even broke the playlists up because I realized that on my YouTube page, I have the I Hate Mount Wall Poetry Podcast playlist, but it had the audio only versions and the video versions for members. So I split those up. So now there's one playlist that just says audio only IHMWPP. And that will be for everyone who's not in a tier or anything like that and just wants the audio-only versions of the show. And then for those of you who are in the Thank You Crew or the Anarchy Crew or the Chapbook of the Month Club, you can go ahead and jump on that. Just have a constant stream of me chatting at you. And again, for those of you, especially on YouTube, if you join the members, those podcasts are, the video podcasts are ad-free. So you will not have to skip ads or anything like that. So just a little added bonus for you there. And now, on with the snow. So today, what we're going to be talking about is if you need to have passion when you are creating. And um, I'm going to give you a big-ass spoiler alert right here at the beginning of this episode. Yes. Of course you do, in my opinion. You need to have passion. And the reason why this even came up at all is because I was hearing people talk about this subject like there was a question. And that blew my mind. I was like, of course you need passion in your art. Why why is this a fucking issue? Why, Why is this even up for debate? It's like dogs bark, cats meow. What the hell are you talking about? And then I want to say that this was from a secret show Slee Ricketts episode that I heard this. I might be wrong. I might have heard it somewhere else. But there's a part of me that feels like this was a conversation I heard Cameron and Bucks having. At the same time, this isn't the only place I've heard this. There were some people on an Instagram post a couple weeks ago going back and forth on this, which I honestly feel is the craziest thing ever. But I understand why someone would say you don't need to have passion in your art. Now, when I say your art, right now I'm mainly talking about poetry, okay? But I might keep slipping into art when I say it, so don't get like all confused or whatever. But there is this idea of the literary eye, which again is something that like kind of pushes my buttons in a weird way that people even have to like put this up for debate. It kind of drives me crazy. And basically, and and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've just heard this all wrong and read about it all wrong. But as far as I'm concerned, the literary eye is the eye when you are doing a first person poem or anything where you are involved in the thing you are taking part in. Um, I think a good example of this in journalism would be like Hunter S. Thompson and gonzo journalism, you know, like he became the story, like the story became kind of secondary to his response and reaction, like him being there became the story. And for me personally, I really like that coming from him, 
But I could see if that was coming from other people, I would not like that so much. I guess like Thomas Wolfe falls under that umbrella a bit. But in poetry, it's like anyone who is talking in first person would fall into using the literary eye. And it's not the literary eye, like eyeball, it's the literary eye like me. You know, one of the things that's funny, um, I've been going overboard on the literary eye probably because I've been writing like reviews for places like that I would normally put up on Yelp, but I, ha I don't put them up anywhere. But I've been writing reviews in the literary eye, like where I go about talking and it's like almost like I'm telling a story about the whole experience of being there and who I was with and the conversations we had and then I talk about the food we ordered and talk about like if I thought it was good and if they thought it was good and what the service was like and what the bathrooms were like and then what happened on the way home and what happened after I got home and all this fucking shit and then I did this one other thing that was supposed to be I was going to do this whole big article about me wanting to go see Morrissey at the Rose Bowl when he was playing over there. So I started it and started all of these parts and it was going to be almost like diary entries about all the things that I had to do to be able to get to this show and then go to experience the show. But then it turns out I didn't go to the show, which was good because he fucking walked off after like 10 minutes because he got chilly. That would have fucking set me right off. So the reason why this is even up for debate is because... There have been great writers who say that the literary eye is not what's important. And what's important is the subject of whatever poem you're writing. And the only way to like really be able to explain that subject is if you completely take yourself out of it. Now, I understand the concept of what is being said here. I don't think that this is humanly possible because our observations are all predicated on the life that we have lived up until that point. Just like if me and five of you went and saw a car crash and then we told the cops what happened afterwards, we would all tell them a little bit different story because different things will pop up to us, will be important to us. Whereas some of them might not be important. You know what I'm saying? So the the idea of being able to completely silence that, I, I just don't think you can. And then how the passion came up was because if you do this, it means you can create art without passion. You can create art without really caring at all. And you're just doing the thing. Now, normally, I'm all about doing the thing, okay? But when you say it like this, it becomes dead. It becomes just a fucking, like, a peanut shell of what a poem is supposed to be, okay? You, you suck all of the fucking life out of it when there is no passion in you to create that thing. And then I was thinking about it. And I'm like, okay, well, what kind of poets would be okay with writing poetry that had zero passion in it? And then I'm like, oh, the formalists. Now, this is not a dig at the formalists. I'm not trying to say formalism is bad and all this other shit. But because the, form, the formalists write in such a way that it becomes objective, all they're looking to do is hit good meter and rhyme and all this other shit. And to me, you can't even like change it up if you're doing that. Because the second you decide, oh, I'm going to kind of like fuck with the meter here. I'm going to kind of do something a little different. That's your ego. So you can't even do anything on the edge or groundbreaking or anything if you take passion out of it and you take yourself out of it. You know what I'm saying? Like the second you remove yourself 
the best thing you can do is a a decent copy of somebody else's stuff. And that will probably annoy or art like just make some people upset and I'm not trying to fucking pick a fight with anybody here. But just the idea of anyone in public saying you do not need passion to write poetry or to create art fucking boggles my mind. Like, if you don't want to put passion into what you do, get a job on an assembly line. Get the fuck away from poetry. Start putting fucking burgers together at McDonald's, dude. Like, leave the arts for the people who fucking bleed fucking creativity. And just want to fucking, like, cut their faces up and slash their wrists and just gush on the fucking canvas. Like, if you're too fucking precious for that, go do something else. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Can you imagine if your partner said to you, like, hey, um, I want to have sex tonight, but when we do it, can we make sure there's, like, no passion and um, it's not even, like, animalistic? Like, I just want, like, bare bones, like, intercourse. Like... I kind of want it to look like um, line drawings in a sexuality pamphlet, you know? Like, how can we make sex the most boring, non-passionate thing in the fucking world? Dude, you would be like, okay, um, thank you so much. I'm going to pack my bags now. You get ready, and I'm going to leave and get a fucking Uber. That's exactly how that would go. And like for any of you who have been in a passionless marriage or a passionless relationship, like can you think in your head, can you remember when the kisses were full of passion and then the day that stopped, when those kisses, there was no passion in it. The kisses became obligation. Like your kisses became something that you had to do to get to the next thing. Or to, like, like you had to do it or else when the person came home, like, there would be a fight. So it's like, oh, okay, necessary evil. Here you go. Mwah. All right. Art is supposed to fucking move you, okay? And if you're not put, as the creator, if you are not putting that into the art for the person who will receive that art, like, that's an abusive fucking relationship, Get the fuck out of there. Run. Ugh. And if you get into sex like that, too, like, that's fucking horrendous, dude. Maybe I'm a little too out there that I think you can compare sex to art. I believe sex is a fucking art form. Like, it is expressive. It is moving. It is, like, life-changing, you know what I'm saying? So just the idea that someone with a straight face can say, you do not have to have passion to create great art just blows my mind. Because honestly, I feel like as someone who consumes art, that you can feel, you can see if what you're looking at has like feeling. When you read a poem, like, you should be able to tell if the person who wrote it gave two shits about what the fuck they were doing. And I don't know. Like, maybe it... Uh, I just I just don't know. What do you guys think? Like, do you think you need to have passion to create great art? Do you think you need to have passion to create anything great? Just get out of the fucking way is how I look at that, man. Oh, I don't know. That's just that's just some shit right there. Not a fan. Not a fan. All right. So let's wrap this fucker up and get deep into those butt plugs. All right. So here we go. So here are some butt plugs. 
um, go over to my website, IHateMattWall.com, where you can find this podcast. And you can also find a ton of short stories and poetry I've written. You can find links to music that I put out and stuff like that. But also you can sign up for my uh, newsletter so you can get a free ebook. And right now it's still the 2021 yearbook. I haven't changed that yet. I was supposed to do it at the end of the year. And it's seriously so far down the list of priorities right now. I just haven't got to it yet. But hey, it's like 300 pages of good shit. So if you want that, go ahead and do that. If you want to sign up for mentorship or anything like that, or just have a session with me, I can, I would do like an hour long Zoom call with you and kind of figure out where you're at and what your goals are set those goals up and then come up with ways for you to hit those goals, whether they are creative goals or whether they are financial goals um, or just life goals with what you're doing. You know, so you can either go to I hate slash mentorship, or you could just send me an uh, email to I hate Matt wall gmail.com. We can talk about that. Blood rag issue seven out now issue eight coming out next month. Um, issue seven. That's got tons of cool shit in here. And issue eight has a ton of cool shit in it already, and it's not even full yet. So if you do have some poems that you want to, or a poem that you want to put into the next blood rag, um, 16 lines or less, we upped it a little bit. So 16 lines or less, and just send me an email that says um, blood rag submission. That's all you got to do. Go ahead and run over and get my chat books on my Etsy shop. Uh, you can get shirts and shit like that on my Teespring shop, which I think I'm going to leave Teespring and integrate into Etsy. I saw that you can do that, so I might be doing that. But yeah, you can get my chat books, my zines, my broadsides on my Etsy shop. You can get um, the Poetic Anarchy volumes on Amazon, as well as some of my poetry books like The End of Everything and Fingering the Mundane. Plus all my fiction you can find there too. Um, I even have something on Vela if you're interested. Um, hopefully next time we talk, I will have in my hand the new Poetic Anarchy Volume 3. I have a proof here, but I want the, I want the real deal because I want to do a giveaway and stuff like that as well. So keep your eye out for that. But um, don't forget, if you have any questions or comments about anything you've heard on this podcast or podcasts other than this one, drop me a line. I hate Matt Wall at gmail.com and um, we will talk about it next week. All right. So there are um, a few questions here already for um, next time. So we will jump on that. Yeah. Just keep eye on my books, everybody. Type hard. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.